In our last video on the GE Profile 2-in-1, we performed an unpacking and inspection of the unit, installed and configured the software, filled it up and performed multiple tests on the unit, conducted various maintenance tasks as required, took all different sorts of measurements, and went through the user interface. But there is an undocumented diagnostic service mode on this device for technicians that we're going to look at today. Maybe it'll help answer some more questions. If you find this video helpful, do me a favor, hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. Also, share a comment on your experience with this menu once you've used it. With the washer powered off, we'll hold down three buttons to get into this menu. That will include the play pause button or the start button, smart dispense detergent, and time dry. And I'll just depress all three for several seconds. Once the service mode comes up, there will be a self-test as a ring appears in white. And once that completes, the select options will appear below. We're presented with a list of 21 menu options, a select button, and up and down arrows. We'll go through the list of these options, beginning with auto, which is all tests, fault codes, model information, software version, LED lamp test, dispenser test, water valve test, water level and temperature test, drain pump test, door switch test, spin cycle test, tumble test, the ability to clear fault codes or change a personality ID, testing the heat pump system, the relative humidity sensor, testing the filter switch, the internal fan test, the accelerated high-speed spin test, the bulk sensor test, and a complete system reset. Pushing down takes us back to our first menu option, auto. We're constantly presented with this task throughout testing. It takes about 30 seconds a piece, so I've sped them up throughout this video. We're gonna save auto for the end of the video as we're gonna do each one manually. So we're gonna begin with fault code here. Pressing select. Now it's interesting that these fold codes have been captured as we look in this snippet from the last video as to why clothing was not drying properly. So a day later, I found a possible reason why some people may be having wet clothes coming out of the dryer. I'm on dry and spin right now. This should be a high speed spin. And we see that it's never coming to speed because inside one of the pieces is uneven and it has that drum off kilter. You could see it. And instead of giving you an alarm or a notification on your phone saying to fix the contents of the dryer, it's going to stop and spin the other way and try and spin the other way again and try and spin up, but it's never going to spin up and it's never going to remove the water from the clothes. So if it goes to the drying cycle, it's absolutely hopeless because it would take like 12 hours to dry it sopping wet. So this proves that out of balance is being reported as a fault code, but never being reported to the app. So this is a failure of software. A reason why people complain about stuff not drying properly when it's out of balance. They're never actually notified. Back is already selected, so we'll hit select. It'll take us back to our main menu. We'll push down to take us to model information. And we can see the model and serial number, the personality ID. I imagine it's this type of machine and cycles. We've ran 50 loads of laundry. That's it. We hit select and go back. And we make our way to software information is next. Interesting note on software, we see that it's modular, different software for different parts of the unit, like the user interface, the motor, and whatnot, answers a question from the last video when it said that the software for the Wi-Fi only needed an update. I wondered what that meant, but now we know. Making our way to LED now, and this is a lamp test, so I'm going to zoom out, and I'm also going to speed it up to three times the speed because this takes a while, but you see every light gets lit up, then the ring fills up in color cycles, followed by the screen. That's it. We'll move on to the next item. And that's going to be the dispenser. I hit select, and I get a door open error. So I close it. Hit select again. There's a lot of different valves to test here in the dispenser test. And from an outward appearance, all the tests look the same. It would take a long time. So in the next menu item, I'm going to show examples of tests that look like this. Here's one of those sped up drains you're going to see a lot of. I move on to water valve. And on this one, we're going to run one or more tests. 
And this is gonna be the first one, main hot. Interesting, everything is measured in hertz, so the sensors convert everything back into a frequency. So if the water level sensor used resistance, that is turned into frequency. We could also see the water temperature and the status of the drain pump. You can see where I do these blurs and these cutscenes, I make this shorter so the video is not two hours long. So speed things up a bit sometimes. Backing out ends this test and you can see that it drains once it does. We'll do one more to do a visual from the inside of the machine as it runs. And although there's a terrible reflection in this video, you could see the water filling into the machine on the left hand side where it would go through the bleach compartment. And that's what the test was. So the water levels and the target levels are close and the water temperature looks good, everything's good. A technician would find this to be okay. We'll hit select and now it'll drain. We can move on to our next test. Make my way back to the back menu by pushing down and then I'll go back and now it'll run the drain again. Next is water level temperature and we'll start the test. I'm imagining in this test you want the actual level to fill up to the target level so you knew the water level was good and you would want to know what the temperature was and compare it to the temperature on the screen to ensure that the temperature sensor was working correctly. That's what I'm gathering from this. The numbers look good and with nothing else to do, I'm gonna end the test by hitting select or going back as it were, having it drain again. Hit back and go to the next option. That's gonna be the drain pump. And this one, when we start the test, it's gonna fill with water. And this one has a greater than or equal to value for its measurement. So we're gonna let it run until it gets to there. The pump switches on and we can see that it's indication switched to on as it starts pumping. And we wanna see if it reaches the target level or greater than or equal to the target level. No doubt it is greater than or equal to the target level. So I guess this test is passed. I end it by hitting select and it drains the drain after it drained. Next will be the door switch. It's open now. I closed it and I open it, I close it and I open it. It works. So I'll go back and on to spin. It warns you not to have anything inside the unit. OOB detection is off. We hit start and it will ramp up. I have abridged this to make it a lot shorter than the test actually is, but it's making its way to 400 RPM. And then after plateauing for a bit, it will start climbing to 800 RPM. then onward to 1100 RPM. Finally making its way to 1300 RPM. After 1300 is achieved, it'll automatically shut down the test. So we'll go back now and move on to tumble. Tumble moves at 50 RPM in one direction and then slows down and stops and then 50 RPM in the other direction, back and forth. I've sped this up just so we could see how it works, but that's how tumble is, just 50 RPM very slow in alternating directions. So we'll move back, tumble worked fine. And we'll go to the next menu option, which is clear fault codes. I'll look at it, but I elect not to clear it, so I'll hit the back button. And this brings us to personality ID 14. And this shows the model, the serial number, and the ability to change the personality ID by holding it for three seconds. And that sounds like a bad idea. I'm gonna leave that alone. So I'm gonna make my way back and leave this menu section. Next is the heat pump test, the most interesting of all, in my opinion. So we're gonna start the test and slowly the heat pump is gonna wind up. I have significantly edited this section because it takes a really long time. What's interesting here is not just the fact that the RPMs are available, but that power information is available up to the second. As we scroll down, we also see that temperature information throughout the unit, five different sensors are made available to the heat pump for gathering temperature information. Also, the relative humidity is also made available. All of these things not included in the app. I just thought that was tremendous. 
A little while later, we see that the compressor is up to around 3600 RPM, and we can see obviously the power has gone up as well. Scroll through, we can take a look at some of the temperatures going up. Later, we're at around just under 4800 RPM, and we top off at just shy of 6000 RPM before the test starts to wind down. We could see the compressor slowly winding down with the corresponding consumption of power. As I scroll through this menu one last time, we can see that the humidity has dropped down to around 49%. So it was actually drying the inside of the dryer during the test. It wasn't all long enough to produce any appreciable amount of heat. I think it capped off at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's it for heat pump. So we'll go back. And next test will be the relative humidity sensor, which we saw in the heat pump. And this was slowly climbing back up as I was monitoring it and went back. Next will be the dryer filter switch. So I can pull out the filter, install the filter, pull out the filter and install the filter. So we'll move on. We'll go to the fan, start the test and we'll hear that fan wind up to its target speed of 3,500 RPM. And this menu also shows the relative humidity, which has been climbing since I tested the heat pump. This test automatically ends on its own. On to the next test. That's gonna be the accelerated spin. Again, this should only be done with an empty machine. Thirteen hundred was achieved, so we'll end the test. And we'll go back and on to the next test. That's going to be the bulk sensor. So this one is kind of strange because if I open the drawer, it goes from empty to full. And if I close the drawer, it goes from full to empty. Same thing for the detergent. I'll zoom out so we can see this. I pull the drawer out and it says full. I push it in and it says empty. Moving on to our last option is system reset. I have no intention on doing this, so I'm gonna skip it. And it brings us back up to auto. I'll run an extremely abridged version of the auto test, so I'm gonna hit start. This includes switches, locks, and lamp test, valves, as well as the heat pump. And as I watch this, I feel as though this is an abridged test compared to doing them all individually. After this, the tumble was tested in both directions, followed by the spin up to around 1300 RPM. At which point the results provided and there weren't a whole lot of results as compared to doing them individually. Again, as I scroll through them, and everything shows green except for FC, obviously, because I still have fault codes stored. I did not clear them. But that was auto test, and that concludes all of the options in service mode. And that concludes this video on the service mode test menu on this GE Profile 2-in-1 washer-dryer combo. I hope you found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. When the next video comes out in this series, a link will be posted in the top right corner. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.